These are just some tips that I've learned using ADSR Sample Manager, and it'll become obvious as to why I like this and I find it so useful. A lot of programs like this have icons all over the place, and it's difficult to learn and navigate where things are. You know, just as an example here, this little loop and this arrow dictate whether you see one shots or loops. So if you turn off the arrow, all of these samples are loops. And if you do the opposite, turn off the loops, all of these things are one shots. So this is a way to just filter out one shots from loops. And that, uh, that comes in pretty handy. If you have them both turned on, they're both in blue, see a combination of both. So there's lots of things where, you know, there isn't a menu and, and you have to look around and go, okay, well, what does this do? What does this do? And just click around this thing to learn how it works. First, I want to tell you that I've organized these libraries into folders. You could have just one big folder. Have it scan your entire hard drive and just add all the loops and samples that it can find on your hard drive, but that's going to be difficult then to manage. For example, right now with these all highlighted in blue, anytime I search, I'm searching the entire library. But let's say I click on Big Fish Audio. You'll see it turns all the other ones off. So they're excluded from the search criteria. And that criteria is by selecting a library. So what I did was I thought in advance, okay, how do I want to be able to filter what I'm looking for? And that's why I have some of these big libraries in their own folder. So for example, Apple Loops is huge. If I click on the little I, it'll tell you that there's 36,946 audio files in there. Sometimes I don't want the Apple Loops included in my search criteria. And so I, I can just click on that blue button and get rid of them. And that turns off that entire folder. The other reason I've organized things this way is that when you load a new library, it goes through some analysis of those loops. It reviews the tags, the BPM and the key. And it takes forever to do that analysis. So if you load too many things all at once, ADSR Sample Manager seems to get stuck. And in order to avoid that problem, I've split things up into different folders. So here's another one. Samples from Mars has 121,000 audio files, and it is up to date. But if I was to load that along with the Apple Loops and the Music Radar files all at once, it, it could get stuck. And there you go. The Music Radar stuff is 69,974 loops. And whereas some of these others are small, so this MGF Mega Pack is 8,528 audio files. So that's why I've organized things that way. Now, one of the features most people like is the tags. When you click on this tag icon to the left, what you're seeing is all the tags that are included in the sum of all your libraries. For example, there's two somethings, loops or one shots, that have been tagged with foliage. And because there's no standard for the tagging, Somebody could put anything they want in those tags. And, um, and that's why you, you see a lot of different things. Uh, so here, female choir, there's 31 loops. So that's not just choir, that's the tag female choir. So when you browse through this list of tags, everything there exists somewhere in your library. I'm looking for booze, not to drink. People saying boo. Well, there you go. See, sometimes boo is not boo. Okay, and as you make selections, the further filter, you can see it, you're adding this filter criteria up at the top. You want to get rid of it all, you can click on the X's, or you can click on X to X out the whole thing and start all over again. So you've got your libraries, your tags, and your favorites. And when you're looking for something, so here I got a vocal that says ooh. If you want more of the same, you can click on the tag and it adds it up to the top here. So you're going to get other things that also have those oohs. They don't always make sense because as I say, the libraries that you've downloaded, it was up to the uh, person that created the samples to decide how to tag these things. They're not always tagged correctly. So I'm going to just type in the tag guitar. And the first thing I notice is I've got all kinds of guitar 
There's some loops and there's some one shots. That one shot sounds more like a loop to me, but it has no beats per minute and no key. That's understandable. It, it's just a sort of a sound that doesn't really have a definable melody. But you can sort by key. So let's say I'm looking for a guitar sound in C major. So I've got some Stratocaster chops here. And the sample, presumably, was recorded in C major. Now down here at the bottom, I can, I can change the key. So let's say I want to hear it in E. You can hear the difference, right? Turn that off, goes back to its original key. Turn that on, and it goes into E. Where that comes in handy is you're working on a song, and everything in your song happens to be in a particular key. Say everything is in G. You select G, leave that turned on, and then every time you listen to a loop, it's going to be in the, in the key of the song you're working on. And let's say I want to eliminate the one shots. Just focus on some loops here. And then down at the bottom here, you've got some playback options. By default, it plays forward. You can play it in reverse forward and reverse. Now the tempo defaults to 120 beats per minute. If you're using this in its standalone mode, you can change the tempo or you can link it to your DAW. So if I had opened up ADSR Manager inside Logic and my Logic project had a tempo of 110 beats per minute, this would play everything back at 110 beats per minute. It would not filter out the loops that you're looking for necessarily. That's up to you. Uh, if you want a particular BPM, you can click on that BPM. And quickly on the right there, you can half, double time, or reset the tempo. You can see it's telling you that it's, it's a loop recorded in C major, even though we're hearing it back in G. You have to be very aware that the label in the tag is overwritten by ADSR Sample Manager. So if I turn off that and play it, I'm hearing that in the originally recorded key. Uh, other things, you can adjust the gain. You know, if it's too quiet, you can increase the volume. Uh, you can it's, it has a high and low filter. You can turn in, this is the high pass filter over here and a low pass filter over there. So there's some things that you can do. And then when you make alterations to say the key or the tempo, you can drag that sample. See it says here, drag a sample into your DAW. There's two ways you can drag it in. You can drag in the original sample in its original key and tempo or you can drag the one as you've modified it. We've increased the gain. We could change the key. Let's say we want this to be an E. And now when I drag that into my DAW, I'm gonna get the modified sample. See those three dots above the drag thing, the drag icon? Choice of dragging the raw sample or the processed sample. So when you've made alterations, you're, you've processed a sample and you want to use it in the key that you want. You have to change that to processed and then click on the drag and drag that into your into your DAW. That's important because for me at the beginning I would get uh, I'd get confused. I'd make all these changes to a sample in ADSR sample manager, then I'd drag it into my DAW and it's not in the right key and it's got the wrong tempo and I'm like, I can't figure out what I've done wrong here. All of the functionality in ADSR sample manager is sort of hidden. You know, you have to click on all these little icons to understand where things are. So random button, dice over here, it's basically just going to walk through samples that meet the criteria you have up above here. Guitar in C major. Every time I press that, I'll get another guitar sample that meets that criteria. Rather than sort of scrolling through these one at a time, you can use that random feature. I haven't found it particularly useful. I usually know what I'm looking for. But if you're just looking for inspiration, sometimes the random thing can help. Show recent files. 
that's very handy. If you've played some samples and now you forgot which one you liked, it's kind of like looking at your history. Hide duplicates. I have not had to turn that on. I'm sure I have duplicates, but I just ignore the fact that the same sample might be in there more than once. These top two are for the ADSR store. Let's not forget that ADSR Sample Manager is um, also a front end to ADSR selling loops and samples, different packs that they sell uh, that you might want to buy. Here's some settings. Sometimes I've had to rescan, but I think what you find is with ADSR Sample Manager, every time there's a, a change in one of your libraries, it actually prompts you with, do you want to rescan? And that is another reason why you probably want to separate these things out into different folders. One challenge is with folders that are changing all the time. For example, I've got my Loop Cloud library included in ADSR Sample Manager, but every time I download new samples from Loop Cloud, of course, it's adding content. And uh, you, you can see here, there's just a lot of subfolders that make up that library. It's pretty extensive. And there's just one. Tell me, are you here to stay? You know, there's just one sample, but it's buried pretty deep in that loop cloud hierarchy. This is why ADSR Sample Manager is so necessary and valuable. I could have used Finder to go into my loop cloud library and navigate all the way down to this particular vocal, but it would it's, it's tedious. Whereas using ADSR Sample Manager with its search capabilities is, uh, is just better. Right now it says there's 935 audio files in my Loop Cloud local library, which is probably true. I also store a lot of my Loop Cloud samples in their cloud storage, which is not in my ADSR Sample Manager library. And it's not there for a reason. It's not there because I'm not always connected to the internet. You'll run into problems if you include a library that is sometimes there and sometimes not. ADSR will keep trying to update and it'll never complete its update because it's reading something off the cloud. Sometimes those files are there, sometimes they're not. I think I've covered most of the basics.